A likely place to start this presentation is to define human factors for aviation maintenance. Dagmar, do you recall some definitions from past discussions? Well, Dr. Bill, the first thing that comes to mind is the application of science and engineering to ensure that people humans can work safely and efficiently. Maintenance personnel want to be sure that they perform the job correctly to ensure safe flight. They also want to be sure that they pay attention to their own personal safety. Are you saying that human factors is about personnel, about people doing the right thing? Since maintenance personnel are humans, that's the first thing that comes to mind when I think of maintenance human factors. But the topic of human factors includes a lot more than just the worker. For example, the work procedures, the tools, and even the aircraft have to be designed in a way that's matched to the physical and mental capability of the worker. So simply stated, human factors programs ensure continuing safety and efficiency by paying attention to issues that affect human performance. I suggest that those issues to which I just referred include a broad array of scientific and engineering fields. Can you identify examples? Absolutely, but my examples have the highest value for this presentation if I put them in plain language. Plain language. I'm in favor of plain language. Okay then. It seems like the definition of human factors is based on whom you ask. It seems to include pieces from a lot of disciplines. There's a lot of psychology involved in human factors. In fact, I took a human factors course from the psychology department in college, but every week a different professor showed up. Someone talked about clinical psychology, like the general mental conditions of humans. She was a psychiatrist, and you know psychiatrists have a lot of medical training. Therefore, she also was able to talk about physical health and the effects of medication, alcohol, and other substances, and how they affect performance. Then, an organizational psychology professor talked about such things as communication, teamwork, leadership, and how groups all work together or fail together. He even talked about why some sports coaches have winning teams year after year. He mentioned examples of psychology mixed with marketing. For example, a long while back, they had to figure out what Betty Crocker should look like so the American consumer would like her. They even determined that the person cooking a Betty Crocker cake would feel more satisfied about their baking skills if they had to add an egg to the cake mix. Now these guys were really getting into the head of the consumer and they do even more of that today. An educational psychologist talked about how people learn, how they remember, and why they forget. He even said that when you may know how to do something, you still need to use checklists and procedures. Failure to follow the written procedure is a common human error in maintenance. And there were more psychology disciplines. I could go on and on and on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that you could. So human factors sounds like a bunch of psychology. That's what I thought at first. But then halfway through the semester, the engineering professors started to show up. Now, I was fortunate that my university had big psych and engineering departments. Yes, an industrial engineer talked about work design, how to write procedures, how to think about the design of the interface between the worker and displays. And it was all about a very structured way to understand jobs by studying each task and then defining the knowledge, the skills, and the attitude to conduct that particular job safely. He also gave some credit to systems engineering. Then a mechanical engineer talked more about ergonomics. He really talked about physical characteristics of humans and about the design of machines to complement human physical characteristics. He described the term anthropometrics, matching equipment to the size of people's bodies. A safety engineer talked about workplace design, about worker regulations from the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. It was all about not getting hurt at work by working smart in an environment that's designed to be safe. Now she emphasized that even busy workplaces like the ramps at a big airport, they can be designed to reduce risk. She also said that aviation maintenance personnel like ramp workers and cabin crews have an injury rate that is well above the national industrial average. Okay, Dagmar, so Human Factors is about engineering, psychology, medicine, and more? Yep, that is what it is all about, but I want to say one more thing here about the class. It was my favorite part, and I may have learned the most here at the end of this class. We went to a coffee shop. 
and watched how they worked. I pulled the human factors disciplines together by visiting the workplaces. We went to an aircraft factory and we observed how the work was going on there. Then we went to a school where they designed computer-based training. We went to an airline and looked at how simulators are used to train mechanics and pilots. We even went to an emergency clinic where we saw a lot more than we wanted regarding industrial safety and worker injuries. Worker injuries can really have long-term effects on the quality of life for the individual and for their family. And it's a really large expense for the industry as well. And this topic is important. Now, while all the classroom theory did have high value, I thought the human factors topics really made sense once we actually got to the job sites. I think human factors are better when applied than in theory. Well, Dagmar, after what you said, uh, I guess I don't have to describe human factors. Uh, there's no way I could remember that much detail from any class that I took in college. Well, at least you remembered me as a student because you were the professor of that class that I just described. Uh, I, I do recall that you earned a very high grade in that class. Uh, your final paper, as I recall, was on human factors in aviation maintenance. 